So why only performance measure metric like accuracy is not enough to evaluate the classification family of algorithms? Accuracy no doubt is an important metric to consider but it doesn't always give the full picture. There is a strong reason behind not settling for only accuracy and hence evaluating model on other metric as well. Folks Nitin here and this is the AI University channel. In this video I am going to explain the reason behind uh, checking out other metric like precision, recall, as well as F1 major or F1 score. I will also cover explanation of each one of them from classification model evaluation perspective. This is going to be a very important video from the perspective of making a firm grip on classification model evaluation techniques. So watch this video till the end. When it comes to classification uh, model evaluation, we do consider accuracy, but apart from that, we also focus on other uh, things like how much uh, robust our model is, how will it perform on a uh, you know different data set and how much flexibility it has to offer. Now you would wonder what exactly uh, do we mean when we say that uh, the uh, our model is robust? Well, it means that our model has uh, learned about uh, data correctly. And hence predictions made by it are closer to the actual values. There may be a case uh, that model is resulting in a better accuracy but is failing to realize the data properly and hence may perform poorly when provided with varied data. For example, uh, consider we have 10,000 soda cans and we have 9600 cokes and 400 Pepsi cans out of it. And we have a machine learning model that classifies uh, soda as a coke. Then the accuracy of the model is 9600 divided by 10,000 equals to 96%, which means that we have a highly accurate model. But if we use this model to predict soda in the future, then it will fail miserably because this model is meant to predict only one class, which is Coke. So basically a classifier which doesn't work properly is giving an accuracy of 96%. So in order to overcome this disadvantage of metric called accuracy, we try to make use of other performance measures of evaluation. Uh, so metrics like uh, precision, recall, F1 measure, AUC, ROC curve, etc. So let me explain uh, them one by one here. Number one uh, metric is precision. So precision, which is also called as the positive predicted values, tells that of the soda classified as Coke, how many of them uh, or what fraction of them are actually Coke. Let's come on to recall now. So recall tells that of the soda that are actually Coke, how many of them are classified as Coke. So let me explain them now with the help of a confusion matrix. I created and explained uh, the confusion matrix in the previous video. So you can watch that video if you want more details and if you have not gone through that video already. So this was our confusion matrix and in, or in order to calculate precision we need two values here. Number one, number of soda cans classified as coke. So this number is uh, nothing but the value that depicts number of soda cans which were classified as coke by our model when the soda was actually coke which in other words is known as true positive plus the number of soda cans which model predicted as coke when the soda was not actually coke that is false positive secondly we need a number of soda cans that are actually coke when classified as coke this value is nothing but the true positive value so our equation of precision would then become precision equals to true positive divided by true positive plus false positive. Moving on to recall, here also we require two values. Number one, number of soda cans which were actually coke. This is the number of soda cans predicted as coke when the soda was actually coke or true positive value plus the number of soda cans which were predicted not coke when the soda was actually coke. Or false negative value. Second parameter is number of soda cans classified as coke when they are actually coke and this is nothing but true positive value again. So the equation of recall would then become true positive divided by true positive plus false negative. 
So the ultimate question comes how these two metrics are useful. Well, let's revisit our uh, confusion matrix once again and this time with respect to the soda classification problem. Let's say we want to build a machine learning model that classifies a soda as a coke and not coke. Suppose we have 10,000 soda cans and out of those 10,000 cans, 9,910 cans are not coke and remaining 90 samples are coke. If we calculate the accuracy of being a soda not coke, then it will come as 9910 divided by 10,000 multiplied by 100 equals to 99.1%. Also, due to this, our classification model, let's say, predicts that the sample soda is not coke every time. Now we know that a true positive is when the soda is predicted coke when it is actually coke. So we know that a model never classifies uh, a soda as coke so the number of true positive is zero here. A false positive is when a non-coke soda is predicted as coke. Here also false positive never occurs because model never predicts a soda as coke so its value is also zero here. A false negative is uh, when a coke soda is predicted as non-coke. Now there are 90 coke soda so all of them are regarded as non-coke. So there are 90 false negative values here. A true negative is when coke soda is predicted as non-coke. We have 9910 uh, coke sodas which are classified as non-coke. Therefore we have 9910 true negative values. Let's substitute these values in the precision and recall formulas. So precision will be calculated as 0 divided by 0 plus 0 which is equals to 0. So basically precision's value ranges from 0 to 1 and if the value of precision is 0 then it means that the test was negative. Now let's calculate recall. So the recall will be calculated as 0 divided by 0 plus 90 equals to 0. So for our uh, classification problem, we got both precision and recall as zero, which is indeed uh, very bad. So for an ideal classification model, both precision and recall has to be one. So based on precision and recall, our model is not doing good, but for the same problem, we got the accuracy as 99.1%. Hence, we should not uh, merely rely on accuracy. We should also calculate the precision and recall to get a clear picture of our model. Now let's go a step further and change the problem statement. This time we say that all soda cans were pre predicted as coke instead of not coke. So in this case true positive will become 90 meaning soda cans are predicted as coke when they are actually coke. The value of true negative and false negative will be zero here as there are not any non-coke related predictions. False positive will be 9910 here as non-coke soda is predicted to be coke. Accuracy in this case would come as 90 divided by 10,000 equals to 0.009 and precision will be equals to 90 divided by 90 plus 9910 equals to 0 0.009 as well. So recall will be calculated as 90 divided by 90 plus 0 equals to 1. So now what does this suggest? Well, precision is uh, low here, but the recall is high, which depicts poorly performing model. Please remember that if recall is equal to zero, then that means that the model is broken and it cannot correctly uh, classify even a single entry. If recall equals to one, then this means that the model has correctly classified all the values. If the precision is too high, uh, you know, let's say close to uh, or equals to one, then the model will have a very low recall because we still will be having a, a high number of uh, false negatives. So we have a precision recall trade-off here. Now precision and recall are very helpful in determining the performance of a model. What if we want to compare performance of different models? In those cases, uh, making comparison on the basis of precision and recall won't be a good experience. For example, let's say we have a model A with precision as 85% and recall as 60%. And then we have a model B where a precision value is 70% and recall value is 65%. Now if I ask which model is performing better, you will definitely find it a bit difficult to provide the answer. So how would we be able to determine that? Well, we can uh, get the answer of that question by calculating just a single metric called F beta measure. 
it is the weighted harmonic mean of precision and recall we use the harmonic mean instead of simple average because it punishes extreme values here beta is a parameter that determines the importance of precision over recall the higher the value of beta the more the importance given to the precision now the value of beta is uh, set uh, depending upon the type of a problem in certain type of problems a higher precision is required for example consider a case when uh, we try to determine if person has a particular disease or not obviously you don't uh, want false positive to tell a healthy patient uh, that he has that disease nor you uh, want false negative which means telling a patient who has some disease that he is healthy now in, a, in other cases precision is not that important for example cases where you are classifying type of soda just we just like we discussed earlier because it doesn't matter if the soda is coke or not right now let's go back to our problem where we wanted to see which model is performing better the one with precision as 85% and recall as 60% or the one with precision value is 70% and recall value is 65%. Let's keep same weight to the beta value here as 0.5 and substitute the precision recall values in the formula given here. So the model A has F beta measure value as 0.5. 709 for model b the f beta measure value is 0.675 since the value of model a is higher as compared to model b so model a performs better this f beta measure can be regarded as f measure or f1 score when the value of beta is 0.5 that is when the value of precision and recall contribute equally to determine model performance so folks i will take a pause here here is today's question out of precision and recall which metric is represented by true positive divided by true positive plus false negative please post your answers comments in the comment section given below so that i can get a chance to incorporate your feedback you can also post your technical questions in the comment section and i will try to answer the same if you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel consider clicking that little subscribe button in case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever i will release a new video so thanks for hanging out with me guys i will be covering next topic in the upcoming video so keep on watching thank you